Okay, I am having a great time talking with the violinist Julie Rosenfeld and pianist Peter Miyamoto. They are in Missouri, and uh, or I suppose it's rather chilly. <laughs> it is not. It is 61 yeah, degrees not. here today. It, it is yes. not even 60 degrees here. How dare you? Okay, well, my it, is, it, is, it is weirdly warm here. Mother Nature, you never know. Uh, uh, Julie is a member, of, both of you are members of the faculty at the University of Missouri School of Music. And uh, you uh, will talk about how you met and this thing about uh, couples in art, you know. It has to be that right chemistry. I think I'll ask Peter to talk about that. Let's, ta let's just start there. Peter. It's your turn to tell us how you kind of came together and how it, how you both discovered it might work. Well, sure. I've been on the faculty here at University of Missouri for 15 years, actually. Um, but uh, we recently had a violin search, and uh, Julie was one of the finalists. And I was actually um, playing her uh, interview recital with her. And we did some beta when we did some WC, the standard yeah. stuff. But we we found that we really clicked. And so I was thrilled that she was hired by the university and we could begin our musical journeys in earnest. So in and other words, you, you, were not, you were not involved in the behind the scenes. What you said, hey, this one I need. Uh, and <laughs> a little devotion. Come on, you had, right? Anyway, right. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing, as yeah. we will discuss shortly. CD. Excuse me for interrupting. Any, any more about your coming together? Uh, no, but then, Julie. but then this project came. Well, then the the fact yeah. of the matter happened that when I was hired by the university, one of the things they do is give you seed money for a new project, nice. and because I had realized that I have a very wonderful collaborator here in Peter, and because I knew I wanted to commission some of my friends and colleagues to write uh, some new pieces for violin and piano. I used that seed money as commissioning uh, commissions for six composers, five of whom I would had very long, fruitful relationships with. The one with whom I had not was Stefan Freund, who was at the University of Missouri. And so I, but I had heard some of his music previously, so I knew I wanted to ask him as well. So I asked these six composers to each write me about a 10 minute piece, because that would fit pretty perfectly on a CD. And lo and behold, they started to trickle in in about 20, in 2015, 2016. And by the time the premieres happened in April of 2016, uh, we had six really diverse, really interesting, um, just, I think, really wonderful additions to the violin and piano repertoire. Well, let's back up a little bit. Uh, we are talking about the 2018 Albany Records release uh, uh, by the duo, and this is the CD's uh, title is New Music for Violin and Piano. It's a wonderful CD. I want to talk, you're going to mention about the producer who put this together, your friend. It's a beautifully assembled CD. I mean, I mean just the quality of sound. And, and, the, and the five composers, I'm just going to run down their names and then we'll kind of get back to them in a minute. Kenneth Fuchs, composition, uh, University of Connecticut. Uh, Catherine Hoover, who died recently. So many of us knew uh, Catherine. John Halle, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He's director of music theory and practice at Bard's Conservatory of Music. Uh, Laura Kaminsky, head of composition at SUNY Purchase uh, Conservatory of Music. And Tamar. Muscal, I hope I've got that one right. Pulitzer Prize nominated Israeli composer, and then at your own, very own campus, Stefan Freund, uh, professor of composition theory. So I've done all that, but what that says in a nutshell is, hmm, these, these, guys, these people are good. This is good. This is high-level stuff, and that's exactly what the CD is. Fabulous, fabulous new music for violin and piano. Well, you know, when you when you commission composers, you never are sure what you're going to get. And I was totally, you know, they're all my friends, so I hoped that they would write me really nice pieces. And of course, they knew me, and some of them even knew Peter, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So, like Tamar Muscal knew Peter from Yale. Um, so I think the outcome, the 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 the. The, the, the really wide stylistic variety of these pieces, as well as the fact that each of them showcases us in many different ways, it just turned out to be really the perfect thing to put on a CD. So then the next question was, how am I going to pay for it? Because it's extremely expensive to do that. 
Uh, the first thing I did was I contacted Albany Records. I knew Susan Bush for many years through uh, my, her, she had released a number of the Colorado Quartet CDs. I was the first violinist of that ensemble for 30 some odd years. And then I knew that I really wanted to have Judy Sh Judith Sherman as the producer. And also Judy had done a number of our quartet CDs as well. She is the most, I think, the most wonderful producer for classical music working these days. She is again nominated as producer of the year for the 2018 Grammy Awards. And we were very thrilled that RCD was one of those listed under her nomination. So we we feel very proud actually that that, that this is kind of a, a, a part of, of her possible winning this great award again. Yeah. Um, so I was set about, you know, writing a bunch of grants as musicians do. We write grants and got quite a bit of money from various sources and the CD. We, we, we toured the music on the CD in 2017. We recorded it at SUNY Purchase. That was my uh, connection with Laura Kaminsky. She allowed us to use the hall at SUNY Purchase. And uh, about a year later, the album came out in uh, April of 2018. And now it's nominated for Grammy for Judy Sherman. And we couldn't be prouder of the whole thing. And, and not only that, it's beautifully put together. I'm going to ask Peter to uh, jump in here in a minute. Beautifully designed. Uh, the, yeah, of course, composers leave their, have their program notes on most every CD. But these notes are especially thoughtful and, and well written, I think, uh, by, by these uh, composers on the CD. And the other thing is talk about color variation. I mean, uh, again, re-listening to it today, to the CD today, I really began to appreciate the, the grand variety of coloration and, and, of course, moving and the whole, whole thing. There's, there's so many contrasting composers in terms of yes. their thought cycles, how they feel. Peter, so, again, so the music, sorry. Kind of serendipity because it just kind of came together. I love the way the program kind of holds together with Kenneth Fuchs, uh duo, which is a great curtain. It's got such great energy. It's got a beautiful middle section. Um, I think it's a great piece. And then you've got the elegance of the dances of Catherine Hoover. Um, and then you've, you've got that contrasted with um, the very jazzy, almost raunchy at times, John Hollis um, uh, work and some rather dark uh, darkness with uh, Kaminsky's undercurrents and very, the very questioning, almost existential uh, Tamar Muscal's piece, and then kind of putting it all together with Stefan Freund's rock out uh, last piece, which I think is a lot of fun to play and, oh, and yeah. listen to too. So you get a little bit of everything, but I love the way that it just worked out that it, it's all kind how of came. How long did you practice to get all that uh, so beautifully? <laughs> Well, it, happened, it just happened that they, they came in kind of gradually, the pieces, which was really good. So I think um, Catherine and, and Kenneth's piece came in very, very soon after I had commissioned them. So we were able to work on those a little bit first. I actually went to Connecticut and workshopped the piece with Ken. Um, Catherine, I had played for her a little bit over the, over the telephone. I wasn't able to see her at that time. But I mean, it you know the the composers kind of gradually got me their pieces. The last one was John Halley in the nick of time because the piano part is so dreadfully <laughs> difficult for Peter. I really felt for him. But um, they all, I think they all eventually, I think had it got an idea of what they wanted to say, and uh, it, it just came out so great in I the end. I, I think that's exactly the the magic of this CD. I, at least I, you know, um, feel that I can understand what is being said. You know, all music is narrative of one kind or another. And uh, sure. again, I listened to, let me to uh, Laura Kaminsky's piece, Undercurrent, from 2015, the, the one that is really, well, it's deep and dark and undercurrent-like yeah. with what yeah. I knew yeah. about the psyche of the of everything and everyone on the planet. Uh, but it's but it isn't necessarily you know I don't want to give people the wrong impression. It's very clear her thoughts, her fears about the future of the planet, and even her optimism. I think really toward the end of this beautiful, beautiful piece for, for piano and violin. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought, but you know, it's just it's, it's it's so full of good of goodies and also wonderful pieces for violinists 
who are professionals who are looking for repertoire to get out and have a look at. Uh, sure. I want, to say something about, sure. I want to say something about Laura, which is that she is now in the throes of actually writing operas very seriously. Amazing. And I think the idea that she's actually now writing kind of vocally has really actually affected her writing for instrumentalists as well. And I think it's really kind of made a difference in her musical language, this fact that she's now thinking both theatrically and vocally as well. And her opera as one is the most performed contemporary opera of of forever. It's quite amazing. Yeah, she's she's know. really having great success with her operas. She's also very socially conscious, which you hear obviously in the the, the title. Program note is quite clear. Yeah. Yes. Well, let me just while we're on Laura Kaminsky for a second, Undercurrent, 2015. Just to get a show to show you a little bit of what my notes were. First of all, the first word, wow. What a fascinating. <laughs> very subconscious piece from the very beginning. And they talk about color and mood and a uh, uh, very dark perception that almost floats to the surface. Yeah, I mean, you know, that is narrative, narrative, narrative. She, maybe we've got a real opera composer in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who else is a favorite? We talk, we, let's talk a little bit about Catherine Hoover because, of, of course, she died very suddenly a good thing frankly, in my view, when you are in the middle of stuff and just, boop, that's it. I love it. But she was busy right up to the very, uh, very end of Catherine Hoover dancing in 2014. Tell, tell me a, bit, a little bit about these three sections. Well, again, I knew Catherine quite well from my time in the Colorado Quartet. She actually wrote us two string quartets that we recorded and I really loved playing. Um, but interestingly enough, on my audition at the University of Missouri, Peter doesn't remember this because he didn't play, but I actually played a solo piece of hers on my audition uh, called uh, Partita. And uh, when I did this, I realized that, you know, she's still very, the, she's most known for her flute music. She was a flute player. So Coco Pelli, for instance, is one of her most performed pieces for flute. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I think, the, again, the idea that she had written this solo work and then I thought, oh, you know, it would be so perfect if she would have a violin piano work that, you know, to add to the others that I had, had commissioned, and it, it came out so great. And I think it's a very kind of, kind of sinuous, you know, the arabesque at the beginning is very, is very kind of, you know, a little bit Asian sounding, a little, a little on the exotic side, and the cortege is an immensely sad second movement. And then the last woman is so full of life. I mean, the fact that, you know, she was in her 70s and still writing such vital music is really wonderful. She was very interested in, in uh, American music, Native American music. Yes. yes. And I hear the, a little bit of that influence in actually the last woman, the stomp. And so, you know what I also hear? And it kind of surprised me from coming from Catherine Hoover. I heard Copeland. This is like Rodeo. Yeah. You know I mean? It's a fun, it's yeah. a home now. Yeah, a barn dance, yeah. Uh, very much so. With a kind of, very much. Uh, I wrote down it's a barn dance with a kind of dervish fetish. Yeah, <laughs> whatever yes. that means. Yes, indeed. Busy, yes. but dancing and circling and uh, uh, reaching and and still very very American. I, I mean, we all wonder what that means when we spout the word. Oh, it's so American. But we all, all of us know somehow. I mean, everybody, all Americans know somehow that thing. Beautiful, beautiful three-part piece. Uh, what about John Hell? Is it Halle? Uh, as in Halle? Yeah, yeah. It's like the G town in Ger like the town yeah. in Germany. So I, I keep wanting to do a little uh -huh. more of the A. So uh, John Halle's um, and choruses, and we mentioned I thought when we spoke a little uh, earlier uh, this idea in his program notes. He's extremely rude. <laughs> Really, he essentially says critics are idiots, uh, and any, you know any fool who hears the, the hallelujah chorus in here has got to be out of his her mind. Now, go, I mean, here's what I here's what I heard, so I can save myself. I heard wonderful, characterful hints here, fragments there of gauze or jazz temperament. Uh, superbly American Gershwin-esque character. It's a delight, and no handle. So thank you very much, John. Okay, okay. Sir, both of you. Tell, tell me about this piece. Well, P Peter has a lot to do in that piece. Well, yeah, I mean, the <laughs> yeah, jazz. I, I forgot the piano part. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> the jazz is, is right out there right from the beginning, but I think it, it climaxes in this almost burlesque 
thing. I just yeah, I, it's it's a hoop to play actually. Uh, once you get past all the notes <laughs> in the piano part, <laughs> what else is new? You know, in the, in right, the, in, exactly. in the so-called piano business. Uh, how well, yeah. Peter has nothing if not great flying fingers. Uh, <laughs> the flying fingers of fate. <laughs> Uh, how about uh, Tamar Muscal's piece? Uh, you know, this is one one that I, I saw the title, Where Do We Belong? A Conversation with Bach, composed in 2015, and I listened to it the first time, I kind of thought I got it. <laughs> I listened to it the second time, and I kind of thought, where, what? I don't know, I don't get it. Uh, the last time I listened to it, which was this uh, very uh, morning, I heard, I heard Bach, I heard the idea. Go, well, tell I me. I think the fact of the matter is, if you look at at the what happens during the piece of the eleven minutes of that work, eight and a half minutes are solo violin. So I think because Tamar is herself a violinist and a violist, I think she reached back to her study of the solo sonatas and partitas of Bach to to bring out I, maybe very difficult techniques. I mean, the piece is very very hard. It's really maybe the hardest technical piece on the, on the CD for me. Um, but I think the whole idea of this, her using this very old style, her remembrances of old style of, of music, but yet putting a very modern spin on it. And then the kind of the way this, the piano kind of just sneaks in and, and I think really just adds to the drama. And then, we get to a climax and then he's gone again and I'm again left at the you end start again yeah. and just to just playing by myself again and I think there's something very kind of unsettling and yet very satisfying about the way she ties that all together I it kind of, a, kind of an arch form yeah. really I think it has way. to do with the form that yeah it, it, yeah it's a very beautiful piece and and you, how are your ten fingers doing on oh, this one? I mean, are you are you saying you'll never play it again? What? No, we'll play it again, but it yeah, but I it makes me practice a lot. <laughs> but you hear the Bach influence. You hear the counterpoint. Yeah. yeah. Especially the violin sections. It sounds very and, similar. And I, I, the words came. The words came to mind because I go. I don't know. Crazy stuff pops out of my head. But magical realism. There was. Uh, you kind of, Julie. You kind of. I don't, whatever that means, but something just sort of magical, the imageries and the kind of journeys she takes us on. Well, interestingly enough, when we premiered th these works here at the University of Missouri in April of uh, 2016, I had a number of friends who came up to me and said, the singularly most beautiful movement of the entire program occurs when the piano comes in, first comes in at the beginning of that piece, not the beginning, but midway through that piece and it was just people said it was just like a revelation to them it was just so stunning they thought brilliant compositional idea yeah <laughs> yeah of, of her. Yeah. stefan freund are you still speaking we are <laughs> <laughs> so how'd it come out are you happy the piece is called life still goes on 2015, and there's a lovely story about his father. I guess his father was a composer, or something. His father a composer. is a composer, Don oh, Freund. Oh, sorry, Why don't he's still Don alive. Freund. I'm glad to hear. Yes, yes. The University of Indiana. He's well-known composer and com teacher of composition at the University of Indiana, uh, Indiana University. Excuse me. Um, but I think it's you know Stefan's commentary on his dad's work, which is. For me, fascinating. You know, what does the son have to add to the father? It's uh, real, and, and interestingly enough, it starts with an enormous piano solo this time. So I think putting it right after the Mescal, you have the lot of violin solo, and then all of a sudden Peter gets to kind of strut his stuff at the beginning of I that. I was going to say it was just when I li listened to it, I thought it was just perfect. Okay, now Peter gets his big thing. How <laughs> thoughtful! <laughs> Go ahead, I've Peter, tell, tell us about it. I've actually done some programs where we did both father and son pieces on it, so it's kind of always an interesting foil there. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, it's it's kind of two sections. The piano solo is very poignant, it's very, um, again, jazzy, a little bit bluesy, but um, for me, very heartfelt, very expressive. Yes. And absolutely. then at some point, it just kind of snaps into this very fast rock out, 
Um, Dance in five eight. Right. Count, count to five. <laughs> and, and is there any French thing? I, I, in the beginning, I thought, hey, this is sort of French romantic. I mean, there's some kind of magic there that's Frenchy. <laughs> I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that, but I'll go back and listen to it again. Okay, or, I, again I'm, next month. So. And of course, it's all subjective, right? Uh, but I had that kind of impressionistic French mm -hmm. influence. I thought maybe in that in that opening uh, solo mm -hmm. piano uh, bit, uh, very nice. Uh, and here I go again, late Romantic French. Uh, psh, I hope I'm anywhere close. Uh, and then, as you say, it really gets going. Lots of interest, episodic. Uh, quite a nice narrative there as well. I love music that is narrative. I mean, without narrative, well, it's just notes on a page. Yeah, that doesn't work. Well, Stefan is a performer because he's the cellist of Alarmo, Alarmo Sound. Sound. So it's it, it it's always nice to play someone who has that perspective. Well, and he's also a string player. So for me, he really understands the violin in a way that very often only string players do. No, no, that always only string players know. <laughs> My teacher, Henry Temianka, was, you know, violin. Oh, I knew, I knew Henry very well in L.A., very much. Well, yeah. I, was, I was his conducting student for about three oh, years wow. there, and that's the, that's the territory where I began to get an inkling about uh, string technique, and yeah, it's like an insane to try and figure out what string players do. You really need, need, a, need a string player to kind of help you work, work through stuff. Anyway, well, I, listen, let me just run by this again. Uh, what, by the way, anything, uh, you know, you're there in Missouri. There's not much to do, maybe, except for teaching yeah. and making a living and buying groceries. Any thoughts? I mean, this is just fresh off the press and has all kinds of stuff. What's going on in your heads? Well, one of the things is that um, our university actually has a really strong new music program yes. and an initiative where all the students are um, – uh, encouraged to be in contact with composers throughout their studies here. So it's it's really, it's part of what we do. We, we are playing both, we're in the middle of a Beethoven cycle, so we do traditional music, but also um, this new music is not something that's completely out of the blue here in Missouri. Right. It's, it's, it's what, and, by, and forgive my being so snotty about Missouri. Forgive me, Mr. Mayor and, and, and Mr. Ms. Governor, whomever you might be. Uh, but but the, uh, and it really brings to mind what I'm very very interested in is all the incredible magical high level activity going on at regional campuses. The big huge campuses everybody knows. That's they're all they're all busy doing things. But I, I I'm always amazed at the wonderful things going on in, in regional. Areas, so that's great. Well, so anyway, to answer the question, you are planning your new CD to be released when? Well, we haven't we haven't exactly decided what the new <laughs> CD is going to be. It's very tempting to to celebrate the upcoming 250th anniversary of the birth of Beethoven, of course. But uh, there have been so many recordings of that. I don't know if that's really in the cards. Uh, but we are doing a, a live Beethoven cycle. Uh, starting actually next month in February of 2019, hopefully going, Peter will take all the 32 uh, piano sonatas all the way through 2020. So uh, we're doing all kinds of fun stuff like that. We're taking this program again on the road in February. We're going to California. Uh, we're playing it uh, around the... Close to Santa Barbara? Are you going to be anywhere close to Santa Barbara? Uh, actually, we're going to mostly be in L.A. We're going to be at Cal State Northridge and That's at Cal... That, that, that's one of my old stopping grounds as well. Well, if I can get the old uh, Volvo sedan to crank up and take the risky trip, I might pop on down. We're going to be right. in Calabasas on Saturday night, February 16th. So that's pretty close to you, actually. Yeah, matter a little bit closer, so, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so we're excited about that. Um, I'm getting ready to go for tenure, so that's kind of exciting for me. This is, uh, you know, will be my sixth year next year here at the university. So, you know, if, if, if they don't hate me already. Maybe they'll maybe they'll allow me to stay. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I better get off my uh, my duff and get a review written up pretty quickly for you. By the way, I forgot to mention why I'm here. Uh, we're going to put up this video interview. We're going to have links to buy the CD. You know, all, all that good stuff at performingartsreview.net uh, in the next couple three days. I hope. Wrap on wood. I'm crazy busy, but uh, at least we're going to get the the interview up uh, and get your site. It's already up, but I want to push it up to the top, and then I'll try and follow up with some. Uh, thoughts about this incredible CD, really beautifully produced, uh, wonderful new music that those of us in the profession who are violinists should really have a serious look at. Wonderful repertoire, uh, even even the um, uh, uh, even the hard stuff, and I don't mean difficult to play. I mean even the kind of uh, uh, very modern music. And by the way, there's nothing here that should really surprise anybody. Really, I mean there's no, nothing that's 
shocking at all in any of its repertoire. But I was thinking of Laura's piece. That's one that, that one has musicians as well as listeners have to kind of wrap their head around. But it's magnificent. It's well worth the, the journey, uh, as are all these wonderful compositions. And again, uh, Catherine Hoover, I was so impressed with this piece. It's such a beauty. So uh, congratulations uh, again, Julie in particular, for uh, uh, pulling this off. And uh, Thank you. Peter for being a perfect collaborationist. Collaborator? Collaborator. collaborator. Yeah, I think collaborationists <laughs> are, are revolutionaries. In, in, in the good sense of the word, a collaborator, <laughs> right? <laughs> and as I said, collaborationists, I think, are you know people trying to overthrow the government. So, uh, uh, man, <laughs> that, that, musicians don't do that. We just make uh, Julie Rosenfeld, violinist. Peter Miyamoto, pianist, University of Missouri. By the way, do you guys know uh, Alice Day? Is she on your campus? Of course, oh, of course. Nice. Good friends. Okay. I just yeah. her an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alice and Scott, because they have, they run a beautiful, beautiful festival out here, Mosey Festival. Out in San Luis Obispo, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So you're in, you're in good company out there. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay, I'm going to hang up before I hear sirens coming. I'm in downtown uh -oh. big city, Santa Barbara. Uh, thanks very much indeed for giving me some time, especially on a Sunday. It's very, Thank very you, Dan. Thank you so much yeah. for having us. Take care. Bye-bye.